Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. In this video, I want to take a big look ahead. It's about the peak of hurricane season. I want to look at the next kind of major area that we're watching out for. I don't want it to do it. In, I don't want to do it in an alarming way. I just want to show you kind of what I'm seeing down the road, but also some good news with a, several spots I'm watching in the short term, not showing a lot of development. Now, let's start with the long term, and then I'll get into the American model and the European model, both trying to develop something as uh, we get into uh, next week. So let's start with this map. So here we are in the Caribbean. Here's the Atlantic. Here's the coast of Africa. Things develop and come off the coast of Africa this time of year because of the trade winds. They kind of go like this. You get a lot of thunderstorms building up in parts of uh, Africa, and then the trade winds work things across. Now, uh, the, the brighter colors on this map, some in the western Gulf of Mexico and some near the east coast of uh, Africa. Rather, that would be the west coast of Africa. These areas of brighter colors are telling me these are kind of areas to watch for development. Western Caribbean, I'll show you that. I'm not seeing big signs of development, but there's a chance of some development in the short term. But this green shading in here, that's saying, hey, there's about a 40 to 50% chance of development next week uh, with an area, actually two areas that will come off the coast of Africa. Now, here we are in the Caribbean. Now, short term, I also want to talk about a little spin right in here. That's been bringing some rainstorms, uh, rain and some thunderstorms to parts of the U.S. and British Virgin Islands this morning. Not really tropical in nature, but you see a little spin there that I'm watching uh, that is going to bring us some increased wet weather for some of us. A couple other areas out here, but the dry air has been limiting things. But as we get into next week, there are going to be a couple bigger tropical waves that come off the coast of Africa. That is super common for this time of year. It doesn't take a meteorologist to uh, tell you that. But the models are now picking up on development. But I want to get into some good news in, in a moment with what we're seeing. Now, this, please take this with a grain of salt. Uh, please know I just want to give you a feel of what I'm seeing because this model, the American model, is showing a developing hurricane. But I do want to get ahead of this because I know some other entities may say, hey, there's a hurricane coming. Not necessarily. We've had a lot of dry air out there, but let's just take you out in time here. Here's the Gulf. Watching it, there's been a ton of rain around the, uh, the northern Gulf, southeast U.S. with an old front. Just monitoring that for any development. This here is by Tuesday. Look at that spot right there. So let's go way out in time. This is into next week. Uh, you can see here, watching this area right there. That's the area. That's that strong tropical wave that rolls off. Now, next week, this is still all off to the east of us. But as we get into next weekend, so we're we're looking at about a week from now, the American model and the icon and even the Canadian model are all saying this is going to develop. Uh, and then eventually a lot of them have this develop into a hurricane. Now this is the scary part, looks scary, but this is way out in time and I'm telling you, this is going to change. We have seen that. We've saw it with the uh, tropical disturbance that we have in the Western Caribbean right now. It does try to show this developing into a hurricane next weekend just to the east of us. So yeah, it has my attention. But with that said, what have we been seeing over the last two weeks? We've been seeing the models trying to develop some stuff and then the dry air winning out. So point being, well, you see a map like this. Yeah, could this happen? Yeah, that, that could happen. There could be some sort of tropical storm or hurricane near us uh, by the time we get into a week, uh, week and a half from now. It is the middle of the hurricane season. Uh, but the dry air has overall been winning out. We've also seen the models just too aggressive on development. So, no, I'm watching this. I like to let you know everything I'm seeing. This scenario may not necessarily play out, uh, but on the flip side, it is plausible. I'm not trying to play kind of both sides of this, but what I'm saying is that uh, we've seen things really not develop over the last couple of weeks. So that's going to be a wait and see for me, wait and see for you. And I'll let you know if I do believe this is going to develop. It's still very dry out there. Here's the European model. So you can see here's the Gulf showing that front that is bringing a ton of rain. This area here lifting from Bermuda up toward the Atlantic region of Canada. I'll show you that. Here's that little spin I was talking about bringing some of the uh, scattered areas of rain and storms to Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico in the next couple of days. But watching off the coast of Africa. Now what is interesting is the European model is also seeing this area developing. Uh, it is seeing an area that will try to develop. So that's, that's why I'm bringing this up. All the models are seeing this, but we've seen this before. All the models are seeing development. This here is by Monday, still showing all this moisture right in here near the, uh, the Gulf. And then you see a couple spots out here uh, that we're watching for any signs of development. So this is on Monday of next week, the European model, which did do a good job with this latest tropical 
disturbance. It kind of backed off on the development, which uh, is the case. Now, what it's showing here, let's go out in time here. I'll bring you into the middle of next week. This is the middle of next week. It's actually showing two areas that may try to develop. But as I mentioned, the wait and see is that dry air that's around it. Uh, we have these areas of high pressure that are blockers. Now the European model though with this one is saying, hey, even if this does develop, there's a window in between these blockers to kind of move a little bit to the northeast, uh, which are actually more to the uh, northwest and then eventually to the north, which may be eventual good news. We don't want anything to uh, come into us. So this here is by the end of next week. So this is a one week from now. Like the American model, it is showing something here trying to form, nothing too aggressive, not nearly as aggressive as the hurricane the American model was showing but it is showing instead of it going more toward the Caribbean, it does have a little bit of a more of a window to curve, hopefully, uh, before it would get closer to the island. So I, I am not sure if something's going to develop. Again, I don't mean to you know play both, both sides of that, but what I'm seeing as a kind of a scientist behind the scenes, yeah, the models like this, if I saw this on a normal year and all of the models are showing a hurricane, I'd say, yeah, we're going to watch out for something. Uh, but what we've seen the last few weeks is this dry air. Let me show it to you right here. So here we are in the Caribbean. There's that little spin right there. Here's all that dry air. Air in a lot of this uh, is well above our heads, mid levels of the atmosphere. So it's more stable up there. So the showers and storms can't build up. That's been a really good thing, preventing tropical storms and hurricanes from developing. So yeah, these waves right here, not looking like they're going to develop. So the next ones, yeah, let's just see what happens. And the good news is uh, one of the reasons that I like tracking the hurricanes uh, at this point is that even if something does develop, it is so far away, and I'll be able to let you know in, in, in with a lot of advance notice if anything were, were to come near us. So point being, next week, watching this spot, that is the next kind of major spot to watch for the potential of a tropical storm or hurricane way the heck out there, and then we'll see if it does develop, and we'll see if it does get close to us. But I, I don't want to leave anything out. I always want to let you know kind of, kind of what I'm seeing in between videos, what, what I'm um, looking out for. Short term, there's that buildup of rain. We've been seeing this just all in here at Old Front. Now, we have our tropical disturbance that uh, a few several days ago, I think five, six days ago, it was looking like this could become a hurricane or tropical storm today. Not the case as, as we've known for days now, uh, but this tropical wave is bringing in the, the heavy flooding into some areas, heavy rain, and then this will kind of build up the moisture in the Western Caribbean. So I'll just keep tabs to see if anything does want to try to develop in the Western Caribbean, but it's these big clusters of storms. Not all of us are going to get it, but this is what is the concern for that mudslide potential. So in these zones, like I was talking about, through the weekend, we have that life-threatening uh, floods that will be possible in those very dangerous rivers and that mudslide threat throughout much of Central America. And then this moisture here does kind of combine with that front. So it'll be interesting to see if anything does kind of want to start to develop. It wouldn't be uh, rare for something to try to spin up in the Western Gulf. Not seeing that now, uh, but I'll monitor that. But either way, the next name on the list is Francine. We have not had it yet. Five named storms. And what is interesting this season is that while there haven't been many named storms, unfortunately, all five of them have impacted land. Usually you get one or two that are out to sea and all that stuff. All five have impacted land. Now, here's that little spin I'm watching here, not super tropical in nature, but today, tomorrow, giving us in the Northeastern Caribbean, St. Kitts and Nevis, back through the US, British Virgin Islands, that chance of rain. But you see all of this moisture here, uh, lots of rain throughout parts of Central America, some scattered showers and storms possible. Jamaica, uh, Cuba, and the Cayman Islands. But you see that resurgence of rain again tomorrow, especially with the daytime heating. Panama North through Guatemala, Belize. Let me know in the comments what you get or don't get. There are some of the scattered areas of rain and storms right through here. So it's kind of a tiny disturbance back toward the Northeastern Caribbean that's moving in. This here is as we work our way into our Saturday afternoon. And generally the same thing on Sunday, which is a problem for that flooding here. And there, as that tropical wave moves across, you see the combination here in the Gulf. I'll widen out that view in a second. Not showing anything spinning up, but that, that's what I'm watching. And then elsewhere, some spotty showers and storms across uh, much of the Caribbean. Here's the big picture. You can keep an eye on this area here and this area north of Bermuda. That is going to bring us very gusty winds, kind of almost like a tropical storm in parts of Nova Scotia as we work our way into this weekend. Tonight into tomorrow, some heavier rain moving in. We could see 100 millimeters of rain or four inches of rain parts of the Atlantic region of Canada. Just 
just monitoring this here by tomorrow afternoon. Some of that rain is going to stretch from New Brunswick uh, back toward Newfoundland. Here's a front that it's going to combine with. And what I'm going to be watching long term is with this front just stalled here along the uh, southeast U.S. and the Gulf states, there may be another little spin up that could try to clip us by late this weekend or early next week, kind of in that pattern where we could see more moisture feeding into the Atlantic region of Canada. So higher seas Atlantic region of Canada. Uh, you can see those seas that will be building north of Bermuda, upwards of five meters or upwards of about 15 plus feet. Elsewhere, here's that little chop right there uh, in those seas as we go throughout the weekend. This is Saturday uh, with that spin that will be approaching Puerto Rico. And then in through here with this tropical wave combining with this front, we'll see the seas here about two to three meters could be upwards of about 10 feet watching for any tropical development here although it's a very low chance and just kind of staying choppy western caribbean and bay of campeche as we get our way into uh sunday this here is sunday of course the higher seas up toward uh, bermuda atlantic region of canada in that spot that we're watching right there north side of puerto rico and the dominican republic so passing showers and storms possible the heaviest rain right with this stalled front yeah there's been tons of flooding uh right in through here elsewhere it's going to be spotty in nature could get 25 millimeters of rain or an inch of rain if you get a shower storm say in Jamaica or in Haiti but it is a bit more I showed you that little spin here northeastern Caribbean so anywhere from Guadeloupe Montserrat St. Kitts and Nevis Saba Stasia St. Martin over toward uh, say St. Croix we could get some of these scattered showers and storms that give some of us the next couple of days 50 millimeters of rain to 75 uh, millimeters of rain or two to three inches of some rain. Watching that Antigua and Barbuda and back through Anguilla, southeastern Caribbean, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we're going to be mainly dry and we are going to be hot. Only a passing shower, St. Lucia, Barbados, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago. Rain chance very low in Suriname. Spotty shower, Guyana and Venezuela. This here, the big problem that I was highlighting yesterday. Thank you for getting the word out about this. Uh, even if it doesn't impact you directly, that's what this community is for, just to spread that word. Still some of this black shading in here, even this kind of red shading, that would be 150 millimeters of rain or higher, six inches of rain or higher or more uh, and that's going to lead to the flooding and that's why we're going to have that runoff and there is going to be flooding there was flooding yesterday in parts of southern mexico monitoring that for the day ahead and again the heavier rain toward uh, the uh, northern uh, gulf states back toward louisiana there's been a, a ton of flooding over toward uh, slidell now uh, jamaica scattered areas of rain and storms for us today about a 40 to 50 percent chance 30 to 40 percent chance across the uh, cayman islands 30 to 40 percent chance that's it uh, trinidad and tobago we may pop up a shower or storm not a lot again. Barbados back towards St. Lucia. Uh, the rain chance stays generally on the smaller side. Grenada, 20% chance today. 20 to 30% chance St. Vincent of the Grenadines, southeastern Caribbean, not as active. Now we get from Martinique to the north, that's where it's a bit more active. 40% chance through the weekend. 40 to 50% chance in Dominica this weekend. No washout, but some scattered showers possible. Uh, we'll see about a 40% chance for tomorrow, a 40 to 50% chance in Guadeloupe, and a little higher overall through the weekend. Antigua and Barbuda with that spin that's nearby, about a 50% chance of some scattered showers and storms. St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat, a 50% chance today and through the weekend. And staying unsettled, Anguilla and St. Bart's, about a 50% chance of scattered showers and a few thunderstorms storms mixed in. We'll do that in St. Uh, Martin, Saba, and Stacia. About a 40 to 50 percent chance. Just an unsettled uh, weekend in between. A nice mix of uh, sun and clouds. Puerto Rico, a 50 percent chance. And we've already had some of that rain nearby today, this morning, uh, in uh, the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, keeping those scattered showers and storms with us. Bahamas, about a 40 percent chance. Not nearly as much as earlier this week. 20 to 30 percent chance. Turks and Caicos, 20 to 30 percent chance. A pop-up shower storm in the Dominican Republic, mainly dry as we get back toward Haiti and very hot uh, weather. A 60% chance, though, the next two days in Belize. Watching out for some areas of flooding. Let me know uh, location and what you got going on in the comments. Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire, the rain chance stays very low, just about a 10% chance of a passing shower over toward Bonaire. Rain chance about 40% this weekend in Guyana, and we're mainly dry this weekend in Suriname. Rain chance a very limited 10% chance. Some scattered showers and storms possible across Cuba. There's that higher chance, Costa Rica and Panama, and points up to the north the next couple days. Some areas of flooding in Nicaragua. We'll see some areas of flooding in Honduras, a 60 to 70% chance of rain this weekend, and keeping that 70 to 80% chance around El Salvador 
and Guatemala. Be mindful of those bigger river crossings. Mexico City, about a 50 to 60% chance in the next two days. A 50% chance of scattered showers across the uh, Yucatan. Only a 20 to 30% chance northern Colombia. Same thing as we get back toward northern Venezuela. Passing shower possible of Bermuda, that bigger system headed to our friends in the Atlantic region of Canada is now to the north, but those seas are elevated. So major flooding issues continue for parts of uh, Central America. Multiple areas to watch out there, watching the Gulf, few other spins around. Uh, most, though, not developing tropically. What I am watching next is what we talked about at the beginning of the video. Models are latching on to some bigger system getting closer to the Caribbean. Let's wait and see, and I'll know more on that throughout the weekend. I want to break that down in depth in the videos as we get into the upcoming weekend. Thank you for being part of this weather community, and have a good and safe day ahead.